In Houston, Brana Flight 182 readies for departure. Scheduled arrival at Seattle, 2048. In Los Angeles, United Flight 624. Scheduled arrival at Seattle, 2050. In Phoenix, Western Flight 622. Scheduled arrival at Seattle, 2051. In St. Louis, Eastern Flight 98. Scheduled arrival at Seattle, 2046. In Minneapolis, Northwest Flight 51. Scheduled arrival at Seattle, 2047. In Denver, Continental Flight 443. Scheduled arrival at Seattle, 2049. Added factors, two commuter airlines, local traffic, seven departures, two military flights, four business jets and worsening weather, all predicted for Seattle at 2050. The result is also predictable. TWA 210, reduce to 160 knots. Turn right heading 110. Continental 94, descend and maintain a 4,000. Well, I can see the runway over there, and you know, we're sure burning up a whole lot of fuel waiting to get on the ground. Grumman 23 Mike, turn left heading 350, descend and maintain 2000. Out of 114 Heavy, expect your base leg in five miles, descend and maintain 5000, reduce speed to 160. United 726, if feasible, reduce speed to 150, descend and maintain 2000. Hey, Bob, we've got to have the center slow down to 210. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We have been directed to hold at 3,000 feet above the ground for approximately 10 to 12 minutes. 2-3, limit turn right heading 300. Continental 29 crossfires at or below 17,000, maintain 13,000. Continental 45 crossfires at or below 17,000, and maintain 13,000. The altimeter is 3013, turn left heading 200. Say, Ed, we're burning quite a bit of fuel down here, aren't we? 3,000 feet. I think we're going to be here for 15 minutes. Go ahead, approach. CK. Tower shut us off. We're going into holding. Hey, the tower shut us off. We're going into holding. Estimated average traffic delay, eight minutes. Estimated fuel consumption while vectoring, 1,062 gallons. The alternatives, profile descent and metering. Profile descent and metering are procedures designed to reduce fuel consumption and noise. Controllers and pilots working together can minimize low altitude flying time by using delay absorbing techniques at higher altitudes where high performance aircraft operate more efficiently. The specific advantages again, reduced fuel consumption and low altitude exposure to other aircraft. Reduced noise levels from low altitude power on vectoring. The profile descent procedure is the key to these benefits. With it, pilots can program their descents to come from cruise altitude to the final approach phase in a near power off condition. Here's how a pilot explains it. A profile descent primarily is a minimum thrust descent. It allows me to stay at my cruise altitude until I really need to start down. My profile descent clearance clears me from cruise altitude to a point approximately 36 flight path miles from the runway on which I will land. I begin my descent at a Mach number, the same as my cruise Mach number, until I get down to a point where the airspeed begins to control. I'll leave my Mach number at that altitude and continue at 320 to 350 knots to 10,000 feet when I begin my slowing. This allows uh, air traffic control to know that all of the airplanes are proceeding at about the same speed with the spacing that they have set up before I get to this point. Okay. That's profile descent. The FAA is modifying air traffic procedures to accommodate this program. Stapleton flow from Denver flow. Yeah, say your flow rate, please. 45, thank you. A new position at air traffic control centers will coordinate the flow of traffic into the terminal areas and program delays at higher altitudes. Here's how a metering controller sees the procedure working. Right now, if you go to a major terminal, you'll find about half the time 
big jet aircraft that are capable of doing 400 miles an hour are being radar vectored and speed controlled at 160 knots. Now what our metering concept will do effectively when it is combined with profile descent is to get these jet aircraft, we'll say 100 to 150 miles away from the airport. Any delays that they might incur will be incurred up above 10,000 feet. Now each center will establish designated metering fixes which will lie on known arrival routes. The metering time that I issue is the time at which aircraft will cross these metering fixes. I know what the airport acceptance rate is. By determining the metering times, I am telling approach control that when this aircraft comes over this metering fix, he should, under normal circumstances, be able to fly directly to the airport with very little extra speed control or vectoring. Hello, Frank. What have we got today? Hi, Tom. There are a number of ways to calculate the optimum point at which to start a descent. Let's look at some of them. Some airlines put their computers to work, and on the flight plan, the top of descent is already indicated. This, of course, is only an estimate, but it does take into consideration things like the type of aircraft, predicted winds, and minimum power requirements for pressurization or de-icing. 112 miles from San Diego. Looks like a nice profile descent. Here's another rule of thumb method used by some pilots. They determine their altitude in thousands. They then subtract the altitude they're headed for, in this case 17,000 MSL. Then multiply by three. This figure is the approximate number of miles from the intersection where a normal profile descent should begin. There are, of course, more precise methods that apply to specific aircraft. Here's the one this pilot uses. There's many formulas different pilots use to get down from cruise altitude to 10,000 feet. But the one that I use and like and I'm comfortable with is that we start our descent from cruise altitude. Say our cruise altitude is 35,000 feet. And I'm descending down to 10,000 feet. Most high performance aircraft descend at 3,000 feet per minute. So I have to lose 25,000 feet, so 3 into 25 goes approximately 8, or 8 minutes. Now, of course, I have to find out how fast I'm going over the ground, so I go to the DME, take a time check for one minute, and say I'm going across the ground at 7 miles per minute. So 7 times 8 is 56. Now, when I get down to 10,000 feet, I have to slow to 250 knots. Now, that's going to take approximately 7 miles. So I have to add 7 on the 56, which is 63. So I wait till I come up on the mileage of 63, and I start my descent. This particular maneuver, when used throughout the country by all high-performance aircraft, could save, and this is a very conservative figure, one half billion gallons of fuel a year. These are some of the available methods. The best one is the one that works best for you. We've seen profile descent and we've seen metering. At Denver, a program has been initiated to apply and refine these procedures. Let's see how it works. Keen from flow control. Metering times. United 29 at 5-2. United 29, Keen 5-2, DJ. Sector 9 from Keene. Got a six minute delay, United 29. Can you hold him in North Platte? Thank you, DJ. United 29, hold east of North Platte for attack on J10. Maintain flight level 390. Expect further clearance at 35. Hold east of North Platte on J10. Maintain 390. Further clearance at 35, United 29. Yeah, we're still getting some traffic delays at Denver. Yeah, they sure don't seem to be letting up any, do they? Good to be able to take the delay at altitude anyway. United 29, cleared to Stapleton Airport from over North Platte via last routing cleared. Cleared to Stapleton over North Platte, last routing, United 29. You're not going to have any problem getting the uh, cabin down here at Denver's altitude, are you, Dave? No, there's no problem getting the pressurization down going to Denver. Okay. We can hold it up a little while longer then. 
United 29, cleared for Keene, runway 26, profile descent. Roger, cleared for Keene, runway 26, profile descent, United 29. About 80 DME miles from the VOR. Ought to do us about right on this letdown. Won't have to use the speed brake. Denver Center, United 29, leaving 390 on profile descent. United 29, Roger. United 29, contact Denver Center on 126.5. 126.5, so long. Good day. Denver Center, United 29 with you, leaving flight level 350. United 29, Roger. Here's your card. Set the bugs, please. I'll tell you, this sure beats a bunch of level offs and vectors and pushing the throttles around. United 29, contact Denver Approach Control on 120.5. Approach on 120.5. United 29, good day. United 29, Roger, good day. Denver Approach, United 29 with you, out of flight level 180, with information for back on runway 26, profile descent. United 29, Denver Approach Control. Roger, flight level 180, runway 26, profile descent. And I'll tune and identify our radios. And I have Altura tuned in. United 29, 11 miles east of the outer marker. Turn right heading 240. Maintain 8000 until Waukee. Cleared for ILS runway 26 right approach and contact Denver Tower, moment 8.3 at the outer marker. This simulated procedure at Denver used a published profile descent chart. These charts will be required for some high density terminal areas. At terminal areas where procedures are unpublished, pilots will receive a clearance which will permit a descent at their discretion at a distance and altitude well before the point at which a descent would start. Although the clearance will generally be to descend to and maintain a specified altitude, pilots will usually be cleared on through that altitude without delay. These procedures will be developed at all airports where high-performance aircraft operate. Approach descent checklist is complete. That's it. Profile descent with metering. Procedures that will drastically reduce low-altitude flying time and the problems it creates, like noise and increased exposure to other traffic. Procedures that cut unnecessary communications and lets pilots determine the descent program best for their situation. While some estimates indicate these procedures hold the potential to save nearly a half a billion gallons of fuel a year, others are more conservative. The important fact is that this is a significant step in America's effort to conserve energy resources.